Hello, and welcome to the inaugural edition of Inspector Lander. My name is Jim Hamilton, co-founder of The Gig, and each week it is my job to dissect and deconstruct a landing page I found out in the wild to help you become a better marketing strategist. Now, a quick disclaimer before we start, I don't have any hard data on how this landing page is performing, so the conclusions I'm able to draw are limited. But the benefit of this exercise is to show you how to think strategically and provide valuable feedback to clients so you can help improve their marketing performance. All right, uh, and one more note before we dive in. If you want to grab a copy of this landing page checklist so you can use it with your own clients, you can go to thegig.io slash checklist and opt in there and you'll be able to download it. Uh, so the brand we are looking at today is called Micro Content Mastery. Uh, their lander URL is right here and I put the objective down here, which is sales. So uh, before we have a look, let's scroll down here to the first part of the checklist. So this first section is above the fold. And so what that includes is the header, the page speed, the image or video, and the mobile view. And so if we zoom in on the header, this is made up of the prehead, the headline, and the subhead. And the reason that I've put all three of them in there is because not all landing pages have all three. Sometimes it's just one, sometimes it's a combination. Um, but together they form one cohesive unit. And the criteria we're looking for here uh, start with the four U's. Uh, unique, useful, urgent, and ultra-specific. This comes from Agora, which is one of the industry leaders in uh, direct response. They do you know, over a billion dollars a year in sales. Uh, the one other criteria that we're looking for here with the header section is, does it clearly communicate the promise? All right, so let's pop over and have a look. Uh, so this is the landing page we're looking at. So we can see this is the pre-header here, videographers, editors, content creators, um, really pops it with the yellow color, super clear, bold font, I really like it. Uh, the headline says, learn to edit and sell Hormozy style reels and add five figures of income per month. Then the subhead says, edit content like this, and it points to the video. So, I really like the pre-head, super strong, really stands out. I think the headline is solid too, and if we look at our criteria here, you know, is it unique? Yes, I would say so. I haven't seen anyone else talking about Hormozy style reels. Uh, is it useful? Yes, for sure, because, you know, we're talking about adding five figures of income per month. Um, is it urgent? Mm, not so much. Uh, yeah, we, don't, we certainly don't get that in the header. Uh, there is urgency further down the page, but definitely not in the header. Um, is it ultra specific? I would say yes. You know, it's, it's not only are you learning how to edit uh, and sell videos, you're learning how to edit and sell Hormozy style reels, which is very specific and kind of hijacking the notoriety of Alex Hormozy. And if you're you know, in the digital marketing space or entrepreneurship, content creation, you know, wealth, sales, you know, you probably heard of him, right? He's, he's everywhere these days. And so this is a great way to, to you know, sort of ride on his coattails, so to speak, because, you know, people are, are definitely familiar with his content. Uh, and then does it clearly communicate the promise? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think the only thing that really sticks out to me, and again, this is, this is uh, you know, this is minor, but it is a framing thing. So when it comes to making a promise like this, you know, the word learn is less sexy right? And when it comes to information, most people, what, what they would prefer rather than to learn or be taught, they want to be shown. They want to discover something. They want to have something revealed to them, right? There's more drama and suspense created with, with those words. So in this context here, in this little feedback section here, we might say, um, super strong header, uh, great call out, um, only suggestion would be to swap out learn for discover. All right. Just add that in there. Okay. So next we're going to look at the page speed. So we're going to go to a website called uh, pingdom tools.pingdom.com. And so what we're looking for here is a load time that's under two seconds because every tenth of a second that your page takes to load is another percentage of your visitors of the clicks coming from your ad or your email or whatever um, who won't actually make it to your site 
right? Because the longer a page takes to load, the more likely it is someone's just going to X out and you know give up on on the click, right? So as we can see, this page has a load time of 1.33 seconds, which is awesome. You know, there are a few things they could do to speed up the page performance according to you know this analysis, but but overall super solid. Um, so we'll say looks great, 1.33 second load time. All right, moving on to the image or video. So here we're looking for uh, a strong hook, compelling content, and captions, right? Uh, obviously the captions you know, don't necessarily apply to an image, um, but when we look here, we've got you know, a, a good hook that is also really congruent with the ad as well, which is important. We've got uh, you know, these super engaging captions uh, and you know, people's names, images, headshots of them. We've got the emojis. So overall, I think this, this uh, you know, video section is super compelling. We also get as an image, the product shot, right? Which is awesome, really, really important. Um, so yes, uh, we'll say love the video, very attention grabbing. Okay, next we're going to look at the mobile view because you know anywhere from 75 to 85% of all the traffic on the internet is mobile, depending on who you ask. So to look at a landing page and only evaluate it on desktop is, is taking a pretty narrow view of things. So typically I use a website called responsivepx.com to look at mobile, but uh, for some reason it's not, it's not working for me today. So uh, we're gonna pop over to this page here and we're gonna see if this works. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're looking at the mobile view on an iPhone 14 here. Um, so we're just going to scroll down and we're just going to, you know, see if there's anything out of place or anything that looks really silly in terms of formatting because when people haven't optimized their page for mobile, there's, it's, there's usually pretty obvious things that, that stick out. So, you know, this image is the resolution's uh, a little grainy, like it's a little hard to make out. Uh, but otherwise, this looks pretty clean. We can see there is some urgency here and you know we'll talk about that later but um yeah overall this is looking pretty good pretty clean there's nothing that's really jumping out to me in terms of things that don't look good on mobile this you know this overall looks solid the the images here are great resolution right like they look really good yeah we get the faq this pops out nicely it's got these sort of accordion style pretty typical um yeah yep all looks good. Okay. So we will say, yep, looks great on mobile. All right. Uh, the last part of this above the fold section is the call to action. All right. So that's this section here. And so this again, isn't always applicable depending on what kind of landing page you're looking at. If you're looking at an opt-in page, it usually is. If you're looking at a sales page, it isn't always necessarily present. Uh, um, but this one does. And so visible, yes. Um, is there a big button? No, not really. That's one place where this, this page falls short. The, the button, you know, could be significantly bigger. And, you know, when you're on a website, you, you know, the bigger a button is, the more inviting it looks, right? The more likely you are to, to click it. And it's a subtle thing, but, but it really does make a difference. Um, eye catching color, I would say yes, because it does, you know, the green does pop, right? The other colors here, you know, you have, we have white, we have red, we have yellow. And so green, you know, there's definitely some contrast there. So it definitely does stick out, but the buttons are all really, really small. And this matters even more on mobile, right? You really want, uh, you know, the buttons to be, to be really big, like, you know, thumbable kind of uh, buttons on mobile. So that's the one thing that sticks out. And then the other thing that you want to check out is like, does the link work, right? Because, <laughs> you know, you'd be shocked at how many landing pages, um, you know, are running traffic and they don't realize that some tech piece is broken, like the link on the CTA above the fold. So uh, we're just gonna click open link in a new tab and we're gonna see if that link works. Yes, it does. All right, so it's taking us to our checkout page. So we're just gonna drop a few notes in here. Um, yep, visible above the fold. Um, button, pretty small would recommend increasing the size two to four times. Uh, green color looks great, nice contrast. Uh, enticing copy, that's another piece. So download now for just 27 bucks. Yeah, that's really nice. 
Typically, the best way to write button copy or CTA copy is to write it um, in first person, right? So like send me the thing or, you know, whatever. Um, but this is nice active language, right? It feels really tangible. It feels like you're getting access to something, right? Download now. You, you're kind of even skipping over this idea of a purchase, right? It's kind of like lowering the level of commitment. It's like, hey, I'm just going to download this, you know? Um, so I really like that. Um, button copy is solid. Link works, drives to checkout page. All right, so let's bold this, so we'll just unbold all that. All right. Um, moving down to below the fold here. Okay, so below the fold, we're gonna start by looking at credibility. Uh, so we're looking for media features, like an as seen on section, uh, any certifications or any other credibility badges. So, um, as we scroll down here, we're not really seeing any credibility. This is, you know, social proof, which we'll definitely get to, but uh, we're not seeing any kind of third party credibility. Um, there is some borrowed credibility from just kind of, you know, talking about how it's the same type of content that Alex Hormozzi and all these other uh, creators are producing, but there's no real uh, credibility badges, no credibility badges. Present. Um, next, we'll look at the product info. And so when it comes to digital products, this is really about creating curiosity, right? So teasing uh, pieces of it, specific pieces of information that are going to be revealed within the product. And often the way this is executed on a sales page like this is, you know, teasing the specific module or the specific page or the specific section where you know you'll you'll find the secret, right? And so in this case, we're not really seeing much of that. Um, let's scroll back up to the top here. So yeah, like this is this is kind of where you would this is where you would expect to see some curiosity bullets that sort of tease um, again specific secrets that that really create a lot of intrigue and curiosity and like oh man I just I have to you know get this product so I find out you know what never to do when when you know pitching a client on a reels retainer or whatever it is right um, so no curiosity bullets major missed opportunity I would say major missed opportunity here would recommend adding some in uh, below the what you'll get subhead with specific modules and timestamps, etc. Right, so that's what really ramps up the curiosity is when you read a bullet that teases a piece of information and it tells you exactly where you're gonna find it. Right, that's what makes it just like really, really hard to resist. Um, as far as benefits and desired outcomes, I think the the page does do a better job with that. Um, you know, we do get the feel like you know, everything you need to edit, Hormozy style real shorts and stories. Um, we don't really get the sale piece, right? So it talks about how to like, learn how to edit and sell. That's what the headline says, right? Learn how to edit and sell. But we're not really seeing anything where it says, you know, how to sell, how to find clients, how to pitch clients. It just says, with this skill set, you'll be able to charge more for monthly short form content retainers or train your editing team how to mass produce quality content that sells. Okay, so again, that's another missed opportunity here where they're really not uh, promising to teach you how to do that. So that it's a key part of the promise in the headline, but it does not really get paid off, you know? So you don't really feel like you're actually gonna get, you know, what, uh, what you need to find clients and actually make money with this skill, especially if you're brand new, and that's guaranteed to be the number one objection, which is that like, hey, how do I find clients? What do I say to my first client? How do I get hired? How much do I charge? All that kind of stuff. Um, so we're gonna put that in here. Um, okay, lots of desired um, outcomes, re-editing, but, but no mention of how to find clients, how to pitch them, what to charge, etc. cetera. This is sure to be the number one objection. Uh, would recommend adding a section to address this. Um, yeah, we'll leave it there. Uh, so then next we have social proof, right? And so here, these are testimonials, reviews, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're looking for, you know, are the images or videos? 
is the avatar represented? Do they actually overcome objections? And do they demonstrate a before and after? So uh, again, if we start back up the top here, if we come down, we have some screenshots here. So this is, you know, these are kind of, you know, probably the least persuasive, although there is some authenticity, right? In the sense that like, hey, they're obviously screenshotted from, from presumably real comments. Um, as someone who edits content for clients, this course has a ton of value. Okay, so that's okay, great course, loved it. That doesn't really do much. I bought your course because of this ad and I enjoyed it. Uh, helpful. So yeah, these are pretty soft, like pretty light. There's, there's not a lot of juice. Um, these testimonials are much more appealing because there's like really high quality headshots. They've got the five stars here. Uh, whether you're a small or large agency looking to start offering micro content or if you're a one-man brand, this will make you highly profitable. 1,000 recommend. Uh, so here's a specific result. So this is nice. Um, if you, any obstacles to you creating outstanding content, Whoa, this is, uh, okay, so this is kind of hard to read. This testimonial doesn't really make any sense. Um, so definitely some, you know, some opportunities on the table here. Um, so, you know, screenshots are pretty soft, uh, not very specific. Testimonials have great headshots, um, but also don't offer a ton of context or overcome any objections. Um, is it, would it be possible to get, possible to get video testimonials from these customers? Because, you know, obviously it's great to have, you know, high quality headshots, but it's even better to have video testimonials, right? Uh, so, and then, Call to action, same thing basically applies here, right? So we can, uh, you know, we can essentially copy paste our uh, our feedback there. And so, uh, oh, lastly, yeah, we have frequently asked questions. We don't want to skip over that. Uh, the redheaded stepchild of uh, most landing pages. So there is an FAQ here, as we can see, and it's got this accordion style, but it's super light. And this is really common. People tend to phone in the FAQ because it, they think it doesn't matter and they think that by the time someone's gotten to this page that they're already sold. But the reality is many people will consume a page by scrolling to the bottom first to find the price, etc. So to read the FAQ and then scroll back up and kind of consume it piece by piece, right? So again, this is another missed opportunity. Um, you know, these are super light you know, and they're really not the, the main, they don't address the objections, right? And that's what the FAQ is really um, designed to do. It's not just like, hey, you know, how long will I have access? Like, you know, sure, that's that's a question that you want to address, but, you know, it would be more around like, you know, will this, uh, you know, course teach me how to find clients? Um, will this course teach me, you know, how, what to charge clients? Um, you know, what if I've never edited a video before? You know, that type of stuff. Um, you know, again, this is a, the FAQ is a really great opportunity to address some of those key objections that you know are going to come up and it's always a good idea to flesh them out and, and really have some, some meat on the bone here. Uh, so, um, FAQ is present, but super skimpy, um, no real objection handling, uh, would recommend beefing this up to address the top three to five objections and uh, include detailed answers. So, um, okay, so now moving on, uh, the last part of this is just evaluating the offer itself, all right? And now again, this is uh, sort of not always applicable depending on whether you're looking at an opt-in page or or a webinar registration page, for example. But you know, in this case, since it's since it's uh, actually a sales page, it's a page that's optimized for sales. We can definitely take a look at all this. So, um, some of these have been pulled from uh, the aforementioned uh, Alex Hormozzi's hundred million dollar offers book. Uh, so, looking at sort of the desired outcome, the product name, the pricing, the value, the bonuses, the guarantees, and then also the urgency and the scarcity. So, as far as the desired outcome. I think it's solid, like it's really solid. Now we've, 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 you know, covered the fact that the, the payoff isn't really there for this, like add five figures of income per month. That's, we, we're, we really don't get the sense that that's going to get paid off within the product. Um, I think definitely learn how to edit these Hormozy style reels. Yes, but it's unclear how much education there is, you know, in here about how to get clients. Um, so, you know, 
uh, half marks for that, I would say. Um, the product name, I think, is awesome. Micro Content Master. I love that, right? It's short. It's punchy. It's got alliteration. Um, 10 out of 10 on the product name. Pricing is also, I think, awesome. Like, this is a super cheap no-brainer. I'm sure there's multiple upsells on the back end of this, right? This is, a, you know, no doubt just a tripwire offer to, to kind of get, get some buyers in on, uh, on the front end. But, um, yeah, the $27 price point is definitely great. Um, I think overall the value stack is kind of pretty solid. Like there are these sort of bonuses here. They don't really recap like the retail value or really go into like what's in these. If they're, you just, you just see emoji asset pack, arrow and font pack, sound effects pack. Like you don't, you know, there's, you, they don't really get beefed up. Um, and they, yeah, just kind of bonus. There's no, you know, there's no retail value associated with these. So I would include those to really kind of increase the perceived value of the offer. But, um, you know, overall, I think the value for $27 is still, you know, pretty solid here. Um, uh, guarantees. There is, I think a 15 day guarantee. Let's have a look. Yes. You'll love it. We guarantee it, uh, 15 days. Yeah. So not bad. I mean, 30 or 60 days would be better. Uh, right. But, but 15 days is something. Uh, and then as far as urgent urgency and scarcity, there is urgency. Uh, there's no scarcity, obviously, like there's no limited quantity here. Um, there is urgency. It's obviously fake because, you know, we're, we're here on the page and, you know, I mean, it's, it still functions and that's not, you know, not uncommon. Uh, however, the, I think the bigger issue here is that the timer does not stand out at all, right? Like it's, it's white against a white background, right? So it's like, it really doesn't pop. Um, and it's, it's talking about Black Friday, which which really <laughs> takes away from the urgency since we're, you know, long past Black Friday. It's the middle of January uh, right now, 2023. Uh, so I think, you know, there is a little bit of urgency, but it's, it's clear that it's not authentic. Now, again, I am still seeing ads for this on a regular basis. So I'm sure this offer is converting. So uh, that's why it's still running. Uh, but the urgency, you know, is, is really kind of clearly not authentic at this point. So we're just going to go ahead and drop some notes in here. Um, desired outcome. Outcome is pretty solid, but a bit lacking on the sell front. How to get clients. Uh, convince them to hire you, etc. Uh, what else are we going to say? Um, okay. Uh, then we'll say love the product name 10 out of 10 pricing. Uh, pricing is great. $27 is a no brainer. Um, value feels solid, but the bonuses could be fleshed out, fleshed out some more and added retail values. Uh, the guarantee, um, guarantee is present, but would be better if it was 30 or 60 days. Um, no scarcity. Urgency is pretty weak. The countdown timer doesn't stand out at all. It also runs down to zero and the page doesn't refresh. So clearly not real. Plus the page talks about a Black Friday sale. <laughs> so um, would recommend removing this. So there you have it. Um, and so basically we've gone from top to bottom with this landing page and you know, analyze it piece by piece, put together some feedback. And so the final step is to cap this recording, uh, drop it here in the video analysis section and then send it off to the client, right? That's that's how you would um, execute on this. So anyway, uh, that wraps up this inaugural edition of Inspector Lander, uh, quite a bit longer than I anticipated. Gonna aim to keep this uh, a little bit shorter and tighter going forward. So thanks for sticking with me if you watch this all the way to the end. Um, and as a final reminder, you can get a copy of this checklist for yourself at thegig.io slash checklist. All right, thanks, peace.